up here. Aya, should I just come up? Come on up. You just have to watch your step on the third leg. Should be good. I have to what? On, on the what now? It's fine. Cross my heart and hope to die. Scout's honor. You, you were never even in the Scouts! Phew, I'm up, in one piece. It's all good, call off the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> so glad you made it! Isn't it nice up here? Sure is. Oh, that view. Gets me every time. <laughs> Sounds like you're starting to remember what's great about P.O. Those times we took some pie up from the diner after school and sat here talking about whatever we felt like. How about that afternoon I snuck in some beers from Uncle Stan and they were really disgusting and you puked all over the rail? In fact, wasn't it kind of where you're standing right now? Oh my gosh, it totally was. Hold up, I seem to remember it was closer to where you were standing, like exactly where your hands are now. Oh! oh. <laughs> I'm glad you're back. I kind of missed having you around. I feel the same way. So, what's life been like for you since you left? Positives? Negatives? You know, I went to university, got a job. basically worked my butt off the entire time. That's both positive and negative, I guess. Ooh. That doesn't sound like a sustainable life plan there. You okay? Yeah, it just, it gets a bit busy sometimes. Mm -hmm. I can imagine Providence Oaks is less complicated. Well, maybe it is, and maybe it isn't. Mm, that sounds juicy. Is this about something? Or someone. I'm glad we can have these adult conversations now. Oh, there she goes with the crazy eyes. M still stands for mind your own beeswax, I see. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm backing off. What about you? Did you end up going to college? Yeah, about that. I mean, I wanted to go to art school, yes, but it turns out I wasn't good enough, or at least that's what they told me when I applied. So I decided to stay and do my own thing. Music, form and stuff, you know. I picked up some shifts at the diner, Barry and I reconnected, got married, and then Max came along. You haven't met him yet, have you? He turns 13 in a few months. Anyway, having Max gave things a different rhythm, but I still continued with my music. Even managed to get a bit of a buzz going in Portland. Lined up a few interesting gigs. Tough to balance, but fun. That sounds exciting. Yeah, just like that, Uncle Stan got sick. Hit him and Aunt Mo like a ton of bricks. It was crushing. There I was, just about to get somewhere with my music. I just couldn't let them down, so I stayed. Helped out nursing with the stand, picked up the ships at the diner. Where was Barry in all this? Barry was actually really great. We 
divided tasks about the house, and he took care of Uncle Stan when he could. No questions asked. He was just there. Sounds like you really stepped up. Well, in hindsight, it was a lot. In the moment, though, you don't stop to think. You just do it. And what now? Well, Mo has offered a couple of times to put my name above the door at the diner. Up until now, it felt like too much. Too soon. Too definitive. But I don't know. Maybe if she asks again, I'll think about it. The way things ended up, it may not have been part of my master plan. But I got to spend some of the most precious moments of my life with the most precious people I know. Got to say goodbye to Uncle Stan and be there for Mo. He basically raised me. I'm grateful I got to do that for them. And I built a family of my own, right here in good old P.O. And one day, those kids will hurl all over this rail, just like we did. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it's been tough, but looking back, I wouldn't trade any of it for the world. Oh, that's so great, Kay. I'm glad at least one of us grew up to be a well-rounded individual. Is there a manual I can borrow? Well, after you left, I had to raise myself, didn't I? So, ready to descend to the world below? Yeah, seems like it's time. Come on, then. Hello? You are speaking to Monster Deal Central. How may I help you? I'm sorry, I'm not interested in telemarketing. Meredith, silly, it's me, Steve. Please, tell me to calm down. You are so close to a deal. At it 87, it shops all across America. m m m m m, -m monster deal Oh, wow, that is so awesome. Tell me more. Okay, okay, I met up with this big retailer, right? They read our great pitch. They loved it, and they want to buy 250,000 copies of Added 87. 250,000. Multiply that by, like, 35 bucks. <sighs> That's a lot. But it's not a done deal yet, right? Not yet, but... Oh, oh, so close. I can almost taste it. Listen. I've got the contract right here. I'm sending over a copy. You should have it tomorrow. Please, please, check, check, double check, check it right away. I want your blessings before I sign on the dotted line, okay? Gotcha, Steve. Don't worry about it. Awesome. I'll be in touch again Tuesday evening. I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. It's official. I love horror movies. A Nightmare on Elm Street is radical. It was amazing. Thank you for watching with me, Miss W. You weren't scared at all? Nope, told you. Man, I wish my parents would let me watch these movies. I can't wait until I move out. Move out? Aren't you 15 years old or something? Almost 16, and yeah. Don't get me wrong, I love tinkering and I love working in my father's shop, but it's just so boring sometimes. I want to see more of the world. I want to meet more people. I'm sure you've noticed, but there's not many teenagers here in Providence Oaks, and I'm homeschooled, so I don't have many friends to hang out with either. What do you want to do after school, then? I don't know. My parents want me to work in Dad's shop, but I don't think I want that. 
And you left when you were younger, so I figured maybe you had some advice for me? Oh, well, maybe. I think... You should really give school a chance. There are quite a few universities that will let you tinker on things way bigger than just cars. That sounds amazing. But a homeschooler like me? That's gonna be pretty tough. You'd have to study really, really hard. Have you maybe considered looking at nice schools nearby? That's also an option, I suppose. I'll look into it. Thank you, Meredith, for talking to me and stuff. You're very welcome, Lori. I had a lot of fun tonight. <laughs> me too. I should get home soon. Later, Meredith. Later! Ah, Steve's parcel. And another note from Tess. Hey, Em, here are Steve's contracts. I bet you're in the mood for some light reading. And now without sarcasm, really, I must admit the energy here is contagious. Is that it actually going to take off? See you soon. Tess. Good morning, Miss Weiss. Uh, good morning, sir. I, I didn't see you there. The name's Walter Morgan. I'm with the Postal Service. I left you a message on your answering machine earlier this week. Oh? I must have missed it. Miss Weiss, if you could follow me into the office. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Are you familiar with the Postal Service policies? Um... Yes, well, the gist of it. Can you remember the segment from Chapter 11, Section 3, First Paragraph? Ah, yes, Chapter 11. Riveting stuff. It says in Chapter 11, Section 3, First Paragraph, and I'll paraphrase. It is forbidden to use Postal Service property for personal gain. Oh, okay, sounds reasonable. Miss Weiss, I'm aware that you've only just begun working here, but I trust that you do not take the responsibilities of a postal worker lightly. No, of course. I mean, uh, yes, sir. The Postal Service puts its employees under the highest level of scrutiny. I advise you to answer the following three questions truthfully. A yes or no will suffice. Do you know Frank Coleman? Yes. Have you ever given him envelopes or received envelopes from him that weren't postmarked? No. Are you aware that Frank Coleman wages bets on baseball games? No. That will be all. Thank you for your cooperation. What's going to happen to Frank? I'm sorry. We can't discuss personnel matters. Good luck with the mail today, Miss Weiss. and Monday mornings, the perfect combo. Theo, positive or that key. Take it away, Bert. Morning, JR. I'm afraid it's a pet peeve for me again. People who come camping here outside the season just bugger off already. <laughs> Loud and clear, Bert. Just like today's weather. Here's your mail.
Prince her.
Hi there, Meredith. I suppose you've come to pick up that VCR thing you dropped off earlier. The movie box? Yes. Did you watch it? Yeah, I did, I did. Took some figuring out how to hook it up to my old TV set, but I got it to work. Good watch. Shark looked a bit fake, though. I saw it in the theater at the time. Pretty exciting. So anyway, Angie over at the Flick Shack hopes this entices you to visit. Yeah, I thought so. Maybe I'll drop in one day. Well, you gotta get it back to work. Hey, here's the package. Thanks. See you around. Here's your movie box back. Oh, thanks so much, babe. Listen, I owe you an apology. Apology? For what? I was Kurt. Just plain Kurt. And here you are delivering movies for me. You deserve better. It's okay. No one can be perked up all the time. So, any idea what caused it? Business is slow. More than slow. I mean, the Flick Shack is in real trouble. That movie box kind of was my last-ditch marketing effort. Nothing's worked so far. That's awful. What'll you do if the store goes bust? I mean, I don't know. Without the store, there's really not much here for me in P.O. So you just up and leave? I don't know. Maybe. Anyway, enough whining. Let me make up for my stupid behavior and reward you for your diligent movie fairing, my lady. Reward me? Yep. I've got... Ta-da! Coupons! They're one of the few perks this job has. I get to take myself and a plus one to a free movie of my choice at the new cinema in Astoria. Valid tonight only. Wow, pretty cool perk. It is, isn't it? So what'll it be, Missy? You in or you out? <laughs> I'd love to. I'm in. Great. Pick you up at your place at eight. I know where you live. <laughs> anyway, gotta get back to it. Bye. Bye.
morning, Meredith. Hi there. Here's the mail. Thanks. Still enjoying life off the grid? Sure am. Although, Mickey had a rough nap. Said he had hallucinations of rotten fish in the RV. Did he have too much of the stuff that makes you feel funny? Well, actually, when I went outside this morning, there was this huge rotting lake trout right below our window. Totally grossed me out. How does something like that end up there? Ew, disgusting. I have no idea how that happened. Oh, hold on, Mickey's gotta read this. Mickey, wake up, honey. Leave me alone, I'm still shit-faced. It's a letter from Damien. Oh. Right, yeah, okay. Hey, give me that. Looks like we won't be here much longer. Oh, really? Where are you going? We're going to Canada. We will be picked up this Thursday, early in the morning. Canada? For good? Joan? Are you running your mouth again? I'm sorry, sweet Meredith. Gotta go. Hey, you know what? You should come by Wednesday. Our last night here. We'll build a campfire, have a drink, maybe a puff or two, you know. And talk about the meaning of life, of course. The complete outdoors experience. Oh, cool. Yeah, why not? Joan! Awesome! Gotta run. See you Wednesday after sundown. Excuse me, what's this all about? Oh, I thought I'd not bother you and just deliver the parcel. I'd appreciate it if parcels are not just dumped on the counter. I'd appreciate it if you'd act like a human being. You'd understand if you had any idea about what I'm trying to do here. Setting up a computer system to handle all the bookings is quite sophisticated. Not just playing a game? Yeah, I'm sure. Thanks for the mail. Bye.
Hello? Hey, Meredith. How was your day at the office? Uh, I mean, mail truck. Oh, hey, Dad. It was a normal day. Nothing special. Okay. Your mom and I are waiting for the hotel bar to open. Thought we'd check in on you. Are you trying to make mom an alcoholic too? <laughs> Easy now. It's just a nice convenience. We found a payphone at this bar. Oh, mom's poking me. I guess she's mad. I blew her cover. Here she comes. Hey, Meredith. Don't listen to dad. We will only have one or two drinks. Hi, mom. It's okay, mom. I like a drink every now and then as well. Alcohol is fine, but I'm changing the subject. Have you met that new guy at the hotel yet, Matt? Yeah, I met him the other day. What a jerk. Ugh, I agree. He's one of the reasons why I won't be working at the hotel. Anyway, how's life in good old P.O.? It's nice. I met some interesting people. That's good to hear. Interesting people. Do you mean interesting, interesting, or just interesting? I mean just interesting. What do you mean? You know what I mean. It's been a while since you've met someone interesting. That's right. And now I'm changing the subject. How are you guys doing over there? Oh, Lord, it's fantastic. I think I might actually want to live here. More of the sun. It's very easy to get used to. No, Dad's telling me to get back. Looks like the bar's open. Wonder what he's ordering this time. I'll get an Alabama Slammer. <laughs> Alabama what? Alabama Slammers! Cheers! This is fun. It's been ages since I've been to the movies. Well, they call it the movies, plural. But of course, we can only see one movie at a time. So, which one will it be? My pick? All right, let's see. Big Trouble in Little China, Blue Velvet, or The Great Mouse Detective. At least give me some guidance, though, like... What do you know about Big Trouble in Little China? It's supposed to be a pretty good ass-kicking. Most John Carpenter movies are pretty exciting, at least. He's the guy who made Halloween and The Thing. Nothing too deep, but should be entertaining. What's Blue Velvet about? Apparently it's noir with a surrealist twist. I once saw a film by this director called Eraserhead, which was, well, weird. Unsettling, too. From what I've heard, this new one is quite memorable as well. Heard anything about The Great Mouse Detective? <laughs> Disney movie, Mouse Detective. What do you need, a road map? All right, I'm ready to pick. Blue Velvet. Good choice. This is going to be... interesting. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of speechless. And that's rare for me. It certainly was something. I loved it. And I never want to see it ever again. <laughs> yeah, that about covers it. It's certainly singular. At one point, I did begin to wonder, do you think Providence Oaks has a seedy underbelly? Don't think so. Haven't found any ears lying around during my rounds. <laughs> well, give it time. So anyway, my parents' house is right down this road, as you well know. Yeah, let's move! I wish I loved anything half as much as you love movies. 
Next time, we'll do something in your area of expertise. You mean driving around in a mail truck? Sure. Park it anywhere around the lake and then just enjoy the sunset. I like the sound of next time, by the way. <laughs> Oops, what a slip of the tongue. So, here we are. Now what? Well, we could have a cup of tea at my place. I would like that. I think we know what that creepy Frank Booth character would be thinking right about now.